Obama deploys more troops. No, not to Iraq, but to Afghanistan. The war the media forgot. Next on Global Pulse. A comparison of how broadcasters worldwide are covering Afghanistan. The US has 33,000 troops in Afghanistan, yet it is called the Forgotten War. Although, according to the Project for Excellence in Journalism, 2007 was one of the deadliest years in the Afghan conflict, and less than 1% of US TV news stories covered it that year. President Obama has now focused attention on the war, so network newscasts, including NBC and CNN, are focused on Obama? 12,000 more of our troops will be soon on their way to Afghanistan. Making it his war now, President Obama today approved that troop increase Many of these forces were set to go to Iraq, but will now be diverted to Afghanistan. That could help President Obama meet two of his campaign promises, to reduce the number of forces in Iraq while increase that number in Afghanistan. International media outlets are telling a different set of stories from Afghanistan. Al Jazeera English, which often focuses on the plight of war victims, reports on the human toll of a recent American missile strike. A rural community in Herat province in the hours after an airstrike. The US military says it killed up to 15 militants, but these people say they're burying 13 civilians. The attack came just days after the US signed a declaration with Afghanistan aiming to reduce civilian casualties. The UN says just over 2,000 civilians were killed in this conflict last year. That's an increase of almost 40% on the previous year. The US says this man, Ghulam Yahya, the senior Taliban commander in Herat, was the target of what they call a precision strike, but he is still alive. The Taliban has said consistently in recent weeks that more troops will only give them more targets. So for the war-weary people of Afghanistan, the arrival of thousands more uniforms is no guarantee of a peaceful existence. India-based South Asian Newsline reports details affecting the region, including NATO troop levels and anti-American protests. More than seven years after overthrowing the Taliban, Washington has struggled to persuade allies to commit more forces and is not expecting substantial new pledges of combat troops any sooner. Civilian deaths have become a political flashpoint in Afghanistan, eroding public support for the war and inflaming tensions with President Hamid Karzai, who has bitterly condemned the American-led coalition for the rising toll. Iran's state-sponsored English-language service, Press TV, which rarely misses an opportunity to highlight criticism of U.S. policy, featured a story that got spotty coverage in the U.S. The U.S. Congress has uh, criticized the Pentagon for what it has described as lax weapons controls in Afghanistan. The Pentagon deserves blame for thousands of weapons that were meant for Afghan security forces but are missing the weapons may now be in the hands of Taliban militants or al-Qaeda terrorists. According to Brian Stelter in the New York Times, not a single U.S. broadcaster had a full-time news bureau in Afghanistan until recently. Now, as Obama plans to send additional troops, the story, certainly on television, is shifting to Afghanistan. But how the U.S. networks cover the Afghan war could affect the outcome. The technique of embedding reporters with troops can obscure what's often called collateral damage, suffering and death on the ground. At Bloomberg.com, former Times Moscow correspondent Celestine Bolin recalled the Soviet Union's 10-year war in Afghanistan, commenting, if the Soviets, with their disregard for collateral damage, couldn't control the country by military force, neither can the U.S. and its NATO allies. Russia's RT seems to agree. Some experts say Washington is copying the Soviet mistakes. We've been there, done that. In 1979, the Soviet Union launched a military campaign in Afghanistan to support the pro-Soviet government. The Soviets withdrew after almost a decade of fighting, but it failed to bring peace to the region torn apart by radical Islamists. After eight years of NATO's military campaign in Afghanistan, it appears the Soviet lesson remains unlearned. For Global Pulse, this is Aaron Coker. This program is brought to you by Link TV for educational and non commercial use only. Link TV is the only U.S. network dedicated to global and national news uncompromising documentaries and diverse cultural programs.
programs that connect you to the world.